Have you ever looked to the heavens above and seen the sky on a starry night and thought to yourself, what's it all for? What does it mean? Who put all those lights in the sky and why? Well, the answer to that question is closer than you think. All we need to do is open the scriptures, open your mind, Open your eyes and look up. For the heavens declare the glory. The heavens tell the story of our redemption. And our redemption is nearer than you think. The Maseroth, what is it? What is it not? Should we be looking at it? Should we be trying to read and understand what it says? Can you bring forth the Maseroth in his season? Or can you guide Arcturus with his sons? Out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who has gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone and the face of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? Or loose the bands of Orion? Are we being influenced by Pleiades? Are the stars telling us something? Job 37, 18, have you with him spread out the sky which is strong and is a molten looking glass? Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Are we looking into the glass, into the mirror, into the reflection, the sea of glass above us, to know what the Father is trying to tell us? Did you know that when you go outside at night, you look up in the sky, you look up at the stars, that you are looking up into heaven, that you are looking into Yahuwah's throne? Revelation 4.1 says, After this I looked, and behold, a gate was opening in the heavens. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a shofar talking with me, and said, Come up hither and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Ruach, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven menorahs of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven Ruach of Elohim. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes before and behind. And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. And the third living creature had a face of a man. 
and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Yahuwah Elohim Tesavah, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who lives forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahuwah Eloheinu, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and for your pleasure they are and were created. This is the throne room. This is his kingdom. This is heaven. When we look up to heaven at night, we see the throne room. We see the many eyes that are about the throne. Job 9, 7 and 9, which commands the sun, Yahuwah, who commands the sun and it rises not and seals up the stars which alone spreads out the heavens and treads upon the waves of the sea, which makes Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. Who is worthy to break the seals, the stars that are in heaven? Who is he but the Son of Man, the bread from heaven? He is the Son of Man. The Mashiach said that no man has ascended into heaven except for the Son of Man. The Son of Man was sitting there talking to him. What was he talking about? This ascending to heaven means to penetrate the heavenly mysteries, to be able to read and to suffer the stars, to fulfill the course, the way, the zodiac, the zod, to course through the heavens and unlock and the seals break the seals only the lamb is worthy psalm 19 says the heavens declare the glory of elohim and the sky proclaims his handiwork day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge there is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, in them he has set a tent, a tabernacle for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and like a strong man, the son of man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit, the circle, is to the end of them and there is nothing hidden from his heat the sun s-u-n runs its course through each chamber through each house through each mansion throughout the year coursing through the heavens in the moedim each sign is significant in relation to the moed this circle that sits above our heads every day, every night, throughout the year, is the inner circle. This is the sod, the council, where Yahuwah and his angels, his ministers, his spirits, his messengers, communicate to us each night a message. Psalm 104 says, he makes his angels spirits his servants a flaming fire the stars proclaim the message in the heavenlies 
This is his counsel, his inner circle of friends. Psalm 82, 1 says that Elohim stands in the assembly of the mighty. He judges among the Elohim. Verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are Elohim, and are all of you are children of El Elyon. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Yahuwah in his counsel speaks as a judge who sits upon a throne and is surrounded with his circle of friends and his counsel. Psalms 89, 5 through 8 says, And the heavens shall praise your wonders, O Yahuwah, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the Kodeshim. For who in heaven can be compared unto Yahuwah? Who among the sons of the mighty, the Ben of El, can be likened unto Yahuwah? El is greatly to be feared in the assembly or the sowed in the secret of the Kodeshim, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Yahuwah Elohot Sevuot, who is strong, who is a strong Yah like unto you, or to your faithfulness round about, that round about is the circle, who is like Yahuwah? Psalm 25, 14, the secret, the sowed of Yahuwah is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 119, 89, forever, O Yahuwah, your word is settled in the heaven. Jeremiah 23, 18, for who has stood in the council in the sowed of Yahuwah, and has perceived and heard his word? who has marked his word and heard it. Amos 3.7 Surely Adonai Yahuwah will do nothing, but he reveals his secret, his sowed, his counsel, his inner circle, unto his servants, the prophets. See, Yah's people have forgotten this knowledge. They've forgotten this language, this mystery language on how to suffer the stars and to interpret and know about the Son of Man who is the bread from heaven. They've forgotten this way, this ancient path that has been from old. Jeremiah 18.15 Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up. See, his people had forgotten him. They lost the message. They forgot how to suffer. But the Son of Man came, and he returned, and he was able to devise the stars. He was able to ascend. He's the one who said, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. This is him that was in heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Well, clearly he was not in heaven at the time he was saying this. But he is saying that I am the one who fulfills this role as the Son of Man. I enter through each stargate and fulfill the role as the Messiah accomplishing all that Yahuwah had from the beginning, this plan, this wisdom that the Father had, the wisdom that helped created the earth. In Proverbs 8.2 it says that she stands, wisdom, she stands in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Baruch 329 says who hath gone up into heaven and taken her wisdom and brought her down from the clouds psalm 24 3 who shall ascend into the hill of yahuwah or who shall stand in his holy place well it's he the son of man we see this in zechariah chapter 3 in verse 1 and he showed me yahusha a high priest standing before the angel of Yahuwah, 
and Hashatun standing at his right hand to accuse him. And Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, Yahuwah rebuke you. O Hashatan, even Yahuwah that has chosen Yerushalayim rebukes you. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Yahusha was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair turban upon his head. So they set a fair turban upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of Yahuwah stood by. And the angel of Yahuwah protested against Yahusha, saying, Thus says Yahuwah Sevuoth, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will guard my watch, then you shall also judge my house, and shall also guard my courts, and I will give you places to walk among those that stand by. Hear now, O Yahusha, the high priest, you and your fellows, that sit before you, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before you, Yahusha, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving thereof, says Yahuwah Sevuoth, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says Yahuwah Sevuoth, shall ye carry every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. So Yahuwah struck a deal with Yahusha the high priest. This is a vision into the future when the Messiah would come and take the covenant, would make the deal on our behalves to be the high priest, the eternal high priest forever. This is the one that's the high priest in the heavens, the Son of Man coming down from heaven. It's not a literal statement, just like he's not literally bred. This bread is from the house of bread, the Bethel, Beth, Bethlehem, the Beit Lehem, the house of bread coming from Virgo, where we see the seed, the seed of Spica, in the hand of Virgo. Virgo holds the seed in her hand, the seed that would crush the head of the serpent. Virgo has been manipulated and twisted over the years as people fell away from the ancient paths. They turned Virgo into the Queen of Heaven, the Ishtar, the Madonna. We see an old illustration of the woman with the child on her lap. This is the Madonna, but that has now recently been changed to Ptolemy's wife as a wig when we look at the constellations. But it was Adam and Eve who had the child that Eve, she says, I have begotten a man from Yahuwah, or the man from Yahuwah. This is that star child that she was looking for, that all desire of nations have been looking for, the Son of Man. But today we are corrupted with the Zodiac. The Zodiac is a zoo. It's a sculptured animal figure. It's the circle of friends surrounded by this animals. This ancient path, this knowledge has been lost in today's understanding of the word that is written in the heavens. Man has corrupted Yahuwah's Maseroth. They have corrupted his way his path, his sowed, his counsel. Man keeps trying to ascend to heaven. They build their towers of confusion so that they can enter in through the stargate themselves. They make predictions that are false. They speak on behalf of Yahuwah, but not from Yahuwah. Isaiah 14, 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the star of Elohim. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Yahuwah warns against this type 
of suffering the stars for personal gain and future signs of the zodiac and so forth. In Isaiah 47, 13, speaking to Babel, he says, You are wearied in the multitude of your counselors. Let now your astrologers, that's the word horoscopist, the astrologers of the Shemaim, the stargazers, those who look into the stars and try to prognosticate. Let those monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from these things that shall come upon you. Jeremiah, he says, Thus says Yahuwah, Learn not the way of the heathen, the goyim, the nations, the Greeks, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. We see semblance of this in the book of Jasher, chapter 9, verse 17. And Abraham saw the stars and the moon before him. And he said, Surely this is the God who created the whole earth, and as well as man. And behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abraham served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abraham saw that all the things that Yahuwah had made upon the earth, and Abraham said unto himself, Surely these are not gods and made that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. And Abraham remained in the house of Noah, and there knew the Yahuwah and his ways, and he served Yahuwah all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot Yahuwah and served other gods of wood and stone and rebelled in their days. It was never Yahuwah's desire for mankind to take what he had placed in the heavens to deliver his message to be used for personal gain. The purpose of the stars are there to reveal his glory. Night unto night they are uttering speech. All of creation is without excuse, as it says in Romans chapter 1. In Jasher 31.40 it says, And Rachel stole her father's images, and she took them, and she concealed them upon the camel which upon she sat. And she went on, And this is the manner of the images, in taking a man who is the firstborn, and slaying him, and taking the hair of his head, and taking salt, and salting the head, and anointing it in oil, then taking a small tablet of copper, or a tablet of gold, and writing the name upon it, and placing the tablet under his tongue, and taking the head with the tablet under the tongue, and putting it in the house, and lighting up lights, just like Hanukkah before it, and bowing down to it of the shrunken head. And at that time, when they bow down to it, it speaks to them in all matters that they ask of it, through the power and of the name of which is written in it. And some make them in the figures of men of gold and silver, and go to them in times known to them. And the figures receive the influence of the stars and tell them future things. And in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father. Those who are of a depraved mind and who are not seeking the heart and will of Yahuwah seek the heart and will of their own flesh, their own desires, so that they can benefit and grow wealthy and deceive people. But that's not the intent of the stars. That's not the intent that Yahuwah put the constellations up in the heavens so that we could have the Moedim, so that we could come together during certain seasons throughout the year. We see even in, further in Jasher, in chapter 53, that the stars are used by the children of Israel to suffer out good things. Just like when the Messiah was born, they looked, those men from the east, the Magi, they suffered the stars to know when the Messiah would be born. In chapter 53, verses 18 through 19, it says, And he ordered them to bring before him his map of the stars, whereby Joseph knew all the times. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, I have heard that the Hebrews are acquainted with all wisdom. Dost thou know anything of this? And Benjamin said, Thy servant is knowing also in all the wisdom which my father taught me. 
And Joseph said unto Benjamin, Look now at this instrument, and understand where thy brother Joseph is in Egypt, who you said went down to Egypt. And Benjamin, verse 21, Benjamin said unto Joseph, I can see by this that Joseph my brother sits here with me upon the throne. And Joseph said unto him, I am Joseph thy brother, reveal not this thing unto thy brethren, behold, I will send thee with them when they go away, and I will command them to be brought back again into the city, and I will take thee away from them. Joseph had previously ticked his brothers off when he told them about his dream he had in Genesis 37, it says, He said unto them, I pray you this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him for it, yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told his brethren, And behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream which you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to you to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observe the same. Abraham knew what Joseph was talking about, but his brothers did not. In Genesis 15:5 we read, And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now towards the heavens, and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall your seed be. This word count is to safar, to connect dots to put together to scribe in the skies in the heavens a picture of what his seed is to be these 12 suns are 12 signs each month we course through the constellations and we land in each one of the zodiac signs or one of the Maseroth signs relating to each one of the sons of the tribes of Israel This heavenly language regarding the seed is laced throughout all of Scripture. The seed was to be born of a woman from Bethlehem. Even the Magi knew this. How did they know when the Messiah was going to be born? How did they know about the star of Bethlehem? Well, it says in Daniel that Daniel was one of the wisest that who had been brought into Babylon. So it's likely that he taught them how to sever the stars and how to interpret these things. We read in Daniel 12:6, And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and on his left hand into heaven, and swore seven oaths by him that lives forever. that it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. The time is coming. The Father wants us to look up, to look not at the things of this earth, but to keep our thoughts on those things above. Revelation 14:15 says, And another angel came out of the temple, the temple that's in heaven, crying with a loud voice, he's delivering a message to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. The time is now. It's time to repent and turn back to the Father and back to his ways, back to the ancient paths. Zechariah 9.9 says to rejoice greatly, O daughter of Sion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. 
Behold, your king comes unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. This is Sagittarius that we see in the heavens with the bow. Matthew 24, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the son of Adam in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the son of Adam coming in on the clouds of heaven in the Milky Way with power and with great glory. This is our king, this is the son of man, the son of Adam, the one who conquered death, our Messiah, our king. He is the one that fulfills the role in the heavenly scroll of the anointed one who will come and pour out the spirit and will resurrect his body of believers his people who are groaning and moaning for that day for the sons of Yah to be manifest. Acts 2.17, And it shall come to pass in the last day, says Elohim, I will pour out my Ruach upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. We are waiting for the water bearer to return during this age of Aquarius, he is soon to come back. Do not hesitate, do not fear, do not be afraid, but continue to look up, continue to look for your Savior, continue to look for the one who can redeem you from above.